Hi there guys, so in my last video we talked about the perk system and this time I thought we'd talk about guilting. Specifically what guilting is, why it's important, uh, and by extension the Nova system, and just overall sort of dealing damage with a medal. Uh, and I thought we'd talk about actually how to guild a medal from scratch, just to show you guys how to do it. Uh, and so, first of all, what is guilting? So guilting is the name that we give to unlocking a medal's special attack bonus. And the reason we call it guilting is because in the Japanese version, that's what it's known as. In our version, it's officially known as a special attack bonus, which is this little number here. Uh, whereas in the Japanese version, it's known as the medal's guilt. A guilt percentage is this number right here. What does that actually mean? What is, what is a guilt percentage? How does that it make a medal stronger? We know it makes a medal stronger, but how do we actually measure how much stronger it makes it? So the way we can tell how much stronger a metal actually becomes is quite simple. Essentially, all metals have tiers of guilt that they fall into. So, a metal that just drops from any regular enemy, from any regular chest in the game, is known as a tier 1 level of guilt metal, meaning that the percentage of guilt caps out at 25%. In fact, I've made a little graphic for seeing what that tier to guilt percentage ratio looks like. Let's have a look at that right now. Okay, so sorry for my little floating face, but here's just a quick little mock-up that I made showing off the different levels of guilt. Uh, so in the game currently, there is tier 1 through 5, sorry, in our version of the game. In the Japanese version, tier 6 literally just launched um, with the Metal Sephiroth EX, which looks pretty badass, and by the way, I called it that it was going to be a, <laughs> a tier 6 medal, anyway. Uh, and as you can see, there's various percentages here on the screen. So what that effectively means is that when you roll for guilt, which we'll talk about later, the number can land in any one of these areas based on the tier of guilt that it is. You'll know which tier of guilt your medal is because when you pull it, it will flash between this symbol here that you see on, under the icon list, uh, and it will flash between that tier and its number. So if you can't remember the icon, that's fine. Just know that when you're doing a pull, your medals will be anywhere between tier 2 and tier 5 right now. Typically, you'll get a lot of tier 2s, a lot of tier 3s, and potentially 1 or 2 tier 4 or 5s, maybe even maybe even 3, if you're extremely lucky. Uh, but right now, we're getting one guaranteed pull in almost all of our deals, which is tier 4 or tier 5, and the rest of the medals will be tier 2 or 3. It used to be the case that you would get tier 1s in those pulls as well, uh, but they removed that, not a feature, they removed that function a while ago. Uh, as of now, the only way to get those particular tier 1 medals is to uh, get them dropped by enemies or in treasure chests or whatever. The reason I have tier 7 and tier 8 down there is because in the same files that let us figure out that tier 6 was on the way, we, un well, sorry, not me, I had nothing to do with it, but I think it was a Reddit user, Jzone, I believe, who is just a master extraordinaire at data mining, uh, found the icons for tier 7 and tier 8 as well, so... So those are something to look forward to, too. <laughs> uh, what you might not know is we also have what's called a guilting campaign. So when you do a normal roll, your guilt will land between, for example, 10 to 25% for a tier 1 medal. Um, and as you can see, the higher the number, the better. So you obviously want to get on the high side as possible. What the guilting campaign does is it cuts the range in the positive direction for what your role could be. So again, let's look at tier one. Right now in tier one, if I was to guilt a medal right now, because we're currently not in a guilting campaign, um, we would have a chance, sorry, that medal could land anywhere between 10 and 25%, meaning there is a one in 16 chance of it being any one of those percentages. Now why is it one in 16? Because 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, da -da 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 -da, up to 25, is 16 different options, and it has a random chance of landing on any any one of them whatsoever. If we do it during a guilting campaign, it's a 1 in 11 chance of landing anywhere we want it, and of course we want it as high as possible. So it's a 1 in 11 chance of landing up to 25. Um, so typically when an event happens, like let's say the Organization B events, where we're given 7 medals of the thing that we need to, of the, of the medal that we're trying to get, a lot of us will typically advise that you wait to actually combine them all together 
and still a guilty campaign. For example, the Organization 13 medals are all tier 3 medals. So if you were to guilt one, not like right now for example, if you were to guilt Vex and B, the last one that came out, as of the time of recording this video, it could be anywhere between 40 to 100%. That roll could be anywhere between 40 to 100%. That is a huge 61 percentage gap between the minimum and the maximum. So if you wait for a guilting campaign, even if you were to get the absolute minimum roll on the guilting campaign, which would be 70%, it would still be better odds than if you were... Sorry. You would do... Okay. <laughs> So during a guilting campaign, like I said, the minimum you could get would be 70%. If you were to roll that same roll, but not during a guilting campaign, the worst you could do would be 40%. The average you would get would be smack on 40%. Which means that if you were to combine every single person's guilt roll together, the combined value of those guilt rolls averaged out would be 70%. There'd be people at the very top, people at the very bottom, and people all the way across the spectrum, all the way in between, with the average landing on 70%. So the absolute worst you could do during a guilt campaign would be to be the average, not during a guilt campaign. Now, of course, exceptions are everywhere. During not a guilt campaign, people obviously get 95, 98, 99, 100, whatever. But for every one of those you hear, there should, if the math holds up, which it does every time, be an equal amount of people that also got down the other end, down the 40, 41, 42 range, which means... It takes a long way to get that up to 100. We're going to talk about how to boost it up, how to do all that stuff in a second, but it's a quick little infographic that I made to have a quick look at. It's not too important. Let's talk about what these numbers actually mean. Let's go back to the game. Okay, so here's one that I prepared earlier. Here's a medal that's guilted at 100%. So it's a tier 3 medal, as you can see the flashing 3 right there. Yeah, the number 100% in orange means that it's maxed its current guilt. Um, what does that actually mean? Okay, so in the late... <sighs> The lowest possible terms to describe how a metal deals damage when using a special attack is we take its little strength number here, we multiply it by its multiplier. The amount of damage that we do is based off the, off the strength stat, which again, if we were to do just like a regular tapping attack, the tap would correspond to just below 7,000 damage from this metal. If we were to use the special attack, so special attack obviously, we take that number here, we times it by this number here. Now, that's not the true number though, because we also have this guilt bon bonus as well. So this Sora, Riku, and Meow Wow medal is guilted at 100%, and I chose this one specifically because this multiplier is easy to think about. If this multiplier was at, let's say, 50%, it, it, could, it could potentially be at 50%, but let's say it's at 50, we would take this 3.50 number here and add on another 50% of that 3.50. So in this case here, 50% of 3.50 is 1.75. So adding that, adding 3.50 to 50% of itself equals to 5.25. So we take roughly 7,000 times it by 5.25 and that's our total strength number. Now because mine is guilted at 100%, tier threes at 100% guilt are really, really easy to figure out because at taking a number, and adding it to 100% of itself just means that you double the number. So in the case of 3.50, double that, you end up at 7.00. So I chose this metal simply because 7.00 is very much really easy to think about. So we take our 7,000 times it by 3.50 plus 100% of itself to give us 7,000 times 7, meaning we do what roughly is that 49,000 damage. We can, think, we can think of this metal as dealing roughly 49,000 damage before any sort of multipliers, buffers, debuffers, etc, etc. There's a hell of a lot more that goes into dealing damage than just that, but if we think about a metal just in terms of its raw strength, we can think about it like that. This number here, plus any chips, plus any strength traits, plus any else, times by this number down here. So that's how we... that's why guilt is so important. Because that number only shows up when you combine seven metals together. And now we'll talk about what the hell guilting actually is and how we actually do it. That's just some background on why it's so important. Now let's go back and have a look. Okay, so let's take a look at our friend Stitch here again. So this Stitch metal is a tier one metal, meaning that the damage you do, again, is based on this number here, times by this number here, plus, let's say 3.41 times 23%. Okay, it's a tier one metal. 
Basically, the reason I've chosen these is because there are 15 tier 1 medals in the game that can be farmed over and over and over again until you have enough copies to guild them. So again, every one of these tier 1 medals in the game is able to be guilted free of charge just by playing the game. Let's take a look at how to do that. Actually, I'll show you which medals they are. Okay, here we go. So we're in the uh, album here. Any of these medals here are able to be dropped. So the ones number 1, number 2, number 7, number 8, all of the 1 or 2 star versions of these farmable medals, these tier 1 free medals. You can see here there's 5 of each attribute. So there's 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and Stitch is the last of those. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 that are able to be guilted uh, free of charge just by playing the game. So let's take a look at those and how to actually do it. Okay, so if you want to know how to find each of these farmable medals, like the best place to try and look for them, I can leave a link in the description. Just remind me if I don't leave that link in there, but I sh I'll leave one in the description. Okay, so I've spent a little while uh, letting these stitch medals build up in my inventory. And now that they're kind of burning a hole in them, I think it's time to make this video. So. I have here seven, or well actually eight, stitch medals. Seven of them are at level one, at one star here. That's how they drop. They drop either at one or two star. So you can see seven of them dropped at one star, one of them dropped at two star. Essentially, we're going to combine all of these together and we're going to form another gilded stitch. Just for the sake of this video, I don't need another gilded stitch. I'm just doing it just for educational purposes, let's say. Now you'll notice here that this stitch medal has one, two, three, four, five orbs inside it, and then a number. So if we think about the stitch metal itself, each of these orbs and also the number, actually also the symbol here, represents an identical metal that was an identical stitch metal that has been fused inside it. So it's identical stitch metal that has been fused inside it at some point. You may have noticed when you first started the game, you got some Sora and Roxas metals. And if you combine them all together, you would see that as you combine them all together, a dot lit up every time, representing that another one of itself had been put inside itself. Now, you've probably experienced leveling medals up at some point during the game. Um, and you may have overlooked these stitch medals, these farmable medals going, no, they're garbage, I won't worry about them. The reason you want to worry about them is for the Nova system. We'll talk about that once we do a guilt, but we'll talk about the Nova system after because it is very, very important as well. So... Let's stop wasting time. Let's just do it. Let's guild a medal. So the way we're going to do that, we're going to level up all of these stitch medals here until they are level... Well, you'll see. Okay, so we're going to level them up one at a time. And then we're going to evolve them. So we're going to go level up with experience and then tap it and then tap evolve. To do that, we need evolution material. Um, you can get that on the weekends and you also need lots of experience. So... Let's keep going. Let's keep leveling them up. So... Actually, I might cut this out. All I'm going to do is just level up and evolve the Stitch Medals to level 2 by just doing this over and over again until I have 7 Stitch Medals at level 2. So I'll be right back in a sec. Just in terms of efficiency, um, to get to level 2 to level 3, the best way is to go like this. So put 5 uh, Silver Ducks and then you'll get perfectly to 30%. And of course, if you're me, you'll get a great experience wasting symbol there, but I'll talk about that later. And sorry, if you want to get from level two, uh, level one to level two, 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 two silver ducks is all you really need. Again, evolve, evolve, evolve. Let's keep going. Okay, so this should be stitch number seven. So let's evolve this one here. Evolve, evolve, evolve. Okay. So counting the one that I had before, I now have seven stitches at level two. You can tell they're at level two because of the little symbol that's appeared over here. It's signifying it's a level two medal. Okay, so we're going to make them to level three and we're going to see how it gets a little bit different from this point onwards. Okay, this is the most efficient way of doing it. So we raise experience of them up again to the maximum, the maximum level per... <laughs> it's confusing. Per star level. There's a few levels going on here. So it's level 30 out of 30. Again, we're going to level it up and evolve it to a 3-star medal now. You can see it's 3-star by the color change and the artwork change. So we're going to do that 7 times. I'll be right back. Okay, so we're evolving our final, sorry, our 7th 2-star stitch into a 3-star stitch again. So 3 stars. Now you'll notice that a little empty dot has appeared here. So for the very first time, a little empty dot has appeared and that only appears in our 3-star medals. Okay, so our medal is now 3-star. 
it's back to level 1 again of the 3 star version. The strength has gone up, da 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 da. One dot has appeared. Now, what does that one dot represent? That one dot represents. Oops. 3 star. Represents that it can now be filled by one of the same type as itself. For example, if I was to put this little stitch, sorry, this stitch into another stitch of itself, you'll see that dot has started to glow and the word trade has appeared. Now the trade system isn't new, but regardless it means that it's working. So one dot has appeared there. There's no point putting any more in at this stage because only one dot's filled up. If we put in any more at this stage, we're just wasting them. We have to take them out and combine them one at a time. Now you could of course take all of these metals, <laughs> level them up from three to four to five to six, and then combine them all together. But I'm going to show you the most efficient way of doing it so you're not wasting additional resources. If you combine one now, you can save yourself the time and effort of leveling them up individually and combine them as you as you rise up the uh, rise up the ranks basically. So let's do it. Let's combine these metals here. It should take yep, it should take two golds and two of silver. Beautiful. Okay, we've also got our one little stitch in there. Beautiful, he's off, ready to go. Sorry, this one's already got a trait on it, but um <laughs> Actually I might do it with a different one. One second. Okay, so let's combine two of the same metals together. Let's do it. So our little stitch and our experience are going in all together so that we now have <laughs> we now have a three star metal at max level that has actually rolled the traits on itself as well. Okay, so it's three stars and you see special attack is gone from zero dots to one dot. Now you may have noticed before that our stitch metals before had let's have a look. I won't bother skipping ahead. Okay. So a regular stitch metal here has a multiplier between 1.95 and 2.99. Let's look at the one here. 1.98 to 3.02. So you can see that by combining the same metal with the same metal, the only real effect that you see is that the native, the uh, inbuilt multiplier goes up. So in this case, it's gone up by 0 0.03. So at, a, at three stars, combining two metals together, if they are stitch metals, increases that multiplier by 0 0.03. Okay, so it's not, not too hard to get, not too hard to explain. So let's evolve this one up from three stars to four stars. Here we go. We need different evolution material every time. Okay, so it's evolved. And you can see we've opened up another slot here. We've opened up another slot to combine a metal with. Can we combine a three star metal into a four star metal? No, we can't. It only accepts four stars into four stars. So I'll explain that a little better in a second. But right now what I want to do is I want to get the rest of these combined and put up the four stars. Okay, so I'm going to combine this with that, this with that, and then we'll talk about it because we have seven here, right? And the way we've been doing it so far is combining two together, two together, two together. We're going to leave one out. So I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to combine three pairs together. So I've already combined one pair together. There are two metals in here right now, right? Let's combine these two together. So we'll put in one more stitch and optimize experience. Optimize experience. <laughs> I'll level it up again. Every time we level them up like this by combining one metal with another metal, when we see that little trait symbol there flash, it means we're gonna, what's happening here? It's taking a while. <laughs> It's going to roll for a trait at the same time. Come on, buddy, come on. There we go. Okay, so leveling up our second pair. So we've got two pairs currently merged together. Not a bad little trait, to be quite honest. Okay, it's so at level 30, sorry, level 40. The stats have all gone up, and more importantly, this dot has been filled. Cool. So let us evolve it up to four stars. Good thing I've got plenty of material to do this with. Cool. Okay, let's back out. Let's do it with our third and final pair. Okay, here we go. So we've leveled up again. <clears throat> Max gauge is plus two, whatever. The traits, uh, for, the, for the tier one medals, they're not super important, but they're still cool to have regardless. Okay, so now we have 
three medals that are at four star. Three medals that are at, that are at four star. Okay, so each one of those is at four stars with effectively two medals combined. For the third one here, we can't combine it with another. Well, there's, there's no point combining it with another. We may as well just get it to level 40 and evolve it straight away. There's no point, again, combining it. We're going to have a four star medal with zero dots lit. Cool. It's lit. It's lit, guys. So, now we have four medals at four star and three of them have dots. Okay. You might be thinking, okay, now we combine the four stars together and you're almost right. You're almost right. But think about it. If we combine the four stars together, there's only one free spot right now. So if we combine these four stars together, only one dot lights up. It's kind of hard to see, but one's already lit and only one lights up, meaning that we effectively would waste. <laughs> I picked the wrong one. There's one dot in here already, right? Meaning there's two metals, two metals combined in here, currently two metals combined. But if we were to smoosh them together, we would only see the effect of three combined. This is the part you kind of got to wrap your head around. It only has the potential as a four star metal to have three combined in itself. All right, so one for itself and the two potentially empty orbs. Let's look at the other one for a second, All right? One here and two empty orbs, meaning it has the potential to be filled with two others of itself right now. So if we were to combine them together at this stage, we would effectively be combining four together, but we'd only see the effect of combining three together. So for that reason, we're gonna jump two of them ahead Green experience, optimize, and wasting planes for the people, wasting planes for the people, here we go. Okay, it's currently a max level, let's take it up to 5 stars. At 5 stars you can see it opens up to 3 dots, so that means we can combine them now. If you don't get that, that's fine, I'll explain it in a second. So now, I have another stitch metal, the same one as before, with one dot lit, and it's at 5 stars, okay. Now we're going to do that, this is very important, we're going to do that twice, and only twice, and I'll show you why. Just making sure I'm not going to screw it up. <laughs> Alrighty, so, here are two of our current four star medals. Okay, and they're now at five stars. So now we have two left, one of them's got one orb lit, one of them has zero orbs lit. Meaning this is only one, right? This is only one metal here, but there are two combined in here, okay? So for that reason, we actually can combine these two together because we're not gonna waste any. One plus two is three, and it currently has room for three. So it's actually fine if we combine them right now. So if we combine it here, we still light up the same orb, but we're not wasting any. There's none to waste, okay? So this orb literally represents this metal. This metal is this orb right now. The flashing orb on the right-hand side, this, that is what this metal is. So, let's combine them together. We're going to roll for another trait because we're combining the same metal together. Damage and raids. Okay, whatever. <laughs> sure, let's let's get damage and raids. Why not? Again, it doesn't really matter. You're not going to use these all the time, but... Green experience. Let's go. Two planes. Should almost do the job. Cool, and now let's take this one up to five stars. So we're evolving it to five stars. We're gonna have two orbs lit. Now this one we're gonna leave alone for a little while. We're gonna take a look at the other ones. So if you're following with me so far, we have now three stitch medals at five stars. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Effectively five, seven medals in the play, sorry, three medals representing seven. Okay, I hope you're still following along. I hope you're still following along. <laughs> okay, now we're going to take these two, these two here, one, two, one, two, and combine them with, and be careful here, one, one, two. Okay, so two plus two equals four. And this five star metal has three dots. This five star metal has three open dots, meaning that it has room for four medals to go inside itself, right? Sorry. Including itself. Every <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> it's such a pain in the ass to explain. Three potentially empty slots. One of them is currently filled, meaning it has two more empty slots. That sounds awful. This plus the other one from before are going to fill it. So three orbs are going to light up because I'm putting in effectively two more of itself, 
right? <laughs> gonna put some experience in at the same time. And that means we're gonna take this five star medal up to effectively six star by combining them all together. Paralysis resist we can skip because it's the worst trait in the game. Pretty much. Uh, we didn't quite have enough experience, so we're going to waste some more planes, get them up. You watch, it's going to say great right now. For once it didn't. Okay, and now, finally, we're going to evolve our 5-star medal into a 6-star medal. And you can see it has 1, 2, 3 dots lit, meaning that it plus 1, 2, 3 of itself. Meaning there are currently effectively 4 medals inside this one here. So 4 plus 3 equals 7, we're almost there. 1, 2, 3, 4. Right? The multiplier's gone up along the way, the strength's gone up along the way. We're almost there, guys. We're almost there. <laughs> We're almost home. <laughs> okay, so this is our other stitch metal here. This is our last three, right? One, two, three. So the four we just had smooshed together plus these three. Let's do it. We're almost there. Please get a great or a wonderful here. Damn it. <laughs> Save the planes. Okay, let's do it. Let's evolve this metal. Okay, so now here we go. We have them all together. We have... Ignore this one for now. Actually, wait a second. If I saw it with no skill on, the other one will go away. The pre-guilted one will go away. So we have one, one, two, three. Three metals here. One, two, three, four. Four metals here. You can see... The one with four has room for one, two, three empty slots, right? The two orbs there, and then also this little symbol here effectively counts as the seventh orb. Now, really important, you need to pass quest, I believe, 34 in the main story to get this symbol here to show up. Absolutely make sure you do that before you get to this final step. You have to do quest 34, I believe, before you do this final step. It's so important, because if you do it without doing quest 34, you won't get the seventh orb lit. You won't have actually guilted the metal. You'll have just boosted the special attack bonus. Okay. You can see the difference here. 2.19 to 3.23, right? Because it has three metals in itself. This number here should be higher, right? 2.25 to 3.29. The multiplier is higher because it has more of itself put into itself. Okay. The very last, the final step is to go four plus three. Okay, we can see over here, our four medals are already lit, and the one, two, three are flashing. So the, twos, the two dots are flashing, plus the symbol is flashing, meaning one, two, three flashes, it's ready to be guilted. Again, this won't happen unless you've beaten quest 34. Okay, so when we're ready, we just make sure that the trait, we're happy to, happy to lose that trait. This trait will stay, and we'll get the choice to override it with something else later, but just for now... We are definitely going to lose the trait of whatever's on the bottom here. So, when we're ready, we can do this. Here we go. Okay, real important, real quick. It's going to roll a number for guilt that can be anywhere between 10 and 25. So, we're not going to be surprised when it lands on, like, 14 or something. I want it to be 25 because I haven't actually guilted it. I haven't fully guilted a stitch yet. Let's see what happens. So, it's going to roll a number. 15. Pretty much bang in the middle. I said 14. Okay, so that 15, it's going to roll a trait now as well. <laughs> damage and raids, it wants us to have damage and raids back. I think I'll leave on gauges just for now, just because I'll use that in proud mode potentially. Anyway, let's have a looky here. So, uh, our numbers have fully gone up, our guilt has gone up. Okay, so, if that was your very, very, very first time guilting a stitch medal, it would say... Nova level plus one. It'd be whatever your Nova level was, plus one. Because it might because it didn't hit 25. If it did hit 25, it would say Nova level plus one. And then it would say Nova level plus six. If we didn't get the roll we wanted to, like I said, we only got 15. How do we increase that number? The way to increase that number is by combining any metal with an identical copy of itself. And now by I mean identical, I mean as long as it shares the number up here, then it's effectively identical. I'm going to roll these two stitch metals together, but I don't want you to get the wrong impression. I don't want you to think that you have to guilt it to use a reroll. 
if you just took, let's say, let's say I take this stitch metal here, that's at one star right now. If I boost this one up all the way to level six, it won't be guilted, but I can still use it as a reroll. Now, as it stands, I have, I have no use for a stitch metal. That isn't, well, I barely have any use for a stitch metal at all, but I certainly don't have any use for two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine this one here with this one here, right? And as you can see, we're doing what's called a re-roll right now. So we're re-rolling. You can see the 10 to 25 percentage is flashing. It's going to say, attempt to raise a special attack bonus from 23%. So the one that I guilted before landed at 23%. So if I try and re-roll this, I will have a 2 in 16 chance of that number being higher. Because if I roll a 24 or a 25, then the number will go up. My chance of doing that is between is, is 2 and 16, because that range is 16 numbers wide. Right? So the only way it's gonna go up is if I if I get somehow get the 2 in 16 chance. Meaning if I press this button, probably nothing will happen. That 23 will stay as a 23. Well, there's a 7 in 16 chance of that happening, right? There you go. It stayed at 23. I'm not surprised by that because it was the overwhelmingly likely scenario to happen. It's going to roll another trait. <laughs> at the end of the day, I ended up with damage and raids. That's kind of funny. Okay. How could I increase that number manually? There are ways of doing it manually by using what's called magic mirror metals. So don't be surprised I have a lot. I haven't spent them in literally forever. I have nothing to guilt. So for the sake of this video, yeah, why not? I'll waste a couple. I do not recommend spending mir mirrors on the farmable metals because you can literally farm more copies, level them up to level six and re-roll and re-roll and re-roll and re-roll. And eventually you will just hit 25%. You'll just, you'll get it eventually, okay? You have to get it eventually. So I definitely don't recommend spending mirrors on the farmable metals, but for the sake of Nova demonstration, I'm going to show you how to do it. So let's say I rolled it and it hit 25%. Ugh, I just actually felt awful doing this just then. Your screen would look like this. Special attack, attack bonus max, 25%. And you see my Nova level has gone up by five. So for each medal, you have the potential of raising it one level by guilting it the first time and then five levels more by getting the max amount. Meaning for the 15 farmable medals, that's five, sorry, 15 times six levels of Nova available. That is 90 levels of free Nova available to you in the game. All you have to go out and do is farm. It's a pain in the ass. It is a real pain in the ass to get all those materials, especially when you're starting out, especially while we don't have zero AP, but you can definitely do it. It's absolutely doable. And I recommend it to every single player in the game, veteran or not, that is free Nova just sitting there waiting for you to pick up and get. There is a hell of a lot more to go over in terms of dealing damage, guys, but I think I've talked for way, 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 way too long now. So I'll leave you with it. The free Donalds in the game are perfect things to practice on. You've got literally seven of them. Combine them all together, you'll get uh, an easy an easy guilt. What you want to do, though, you probably want to wait for a guilting campaign because, again, like I showed you before, the chance of getting the highest number possible to get that Nova level that you desperately want is better. And even if you don't get the max number, it will, on average, take less mirrors to get up there. Guys, I've waffled for long enough. I'm talking nonsense now. Anyway, always wait for a guilting campaign if you can. With the farmable medals, just go for it. The 1 in 11 chance is not that much worse than the 1 in 16 chance. Ugh, I'm not making sense. All right, guys, I'll leave it with you. <laughs> if you need any more questions asked or want me to go over any different mechanics, just let me know. I'll make a video about it. Still no content in the game. Hopefully we'll get some this week. All right, guys. Catch you later. All the best. Bye.